Tame it. We gon' do this the Bronco way. Look, it's about time. Reside, reside. The blue and white nation Bronco preside, preside. Get and lead the others to the Hey there, Bronco fans, and welcome inside the Chancellor Suite at Luther Nick Gerald Stadium and onto the Bronco Sports Network for this week's edition of the Pigskin Press Talk. Fayetteville State football conversation. We're joined by the head coach, Richard Hayes, and this week talking wide receivers with uh, senior wide receiver David Barrow. So I'm your play-by-play -play man, Andrew Chapman, and uh, great to be sitting with you guys once again. Mm -hmm. Welcome back home. Uh, thanks for chatting with us today. Oh, yeah. So I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. So uh, we're two weeks down now. The Broncos uh, coming back uh, home one and one after the loss to Valdosta State, but now it is time for CIAA play. Fayetteville State getting ready to take on the ECSU Vikings, Elizabeth City State in the Down East Football Classic. Uh, breaking down a little bit of last week's a long road trip mm -hmm. down to South Georgia, Coach Hazy. You talked about it in our previous conversation, but uh, that, that's a group down there with national championship DNA is what mm -hmm. you said, and they are ranked inside of the top five nationally now. And uh, it was it was a good test for you guys to experience that firsthand and, and mm -hmm. really tune up before uh, conference play gets rolling. What were you know some of your key takeaways from that game despite ultimately the, the score at the end of the night? Uh, one was the fact that we didn't quit. We got down very early in the game. I believe in the second quarter they kind of opened it up for, for a little bit from us. And uh, we went in the halftime. We thought we made the correct adjustments. Uh, in the first play of the third quarter they come out. We miss a tackle. They go 73 yards down the field. It kind of broke our back. Uh, but, you know, our kids didn't quit. You know, Valdosta State was really trying to run us out of Georgia. Uh, they, they, they continued to throw the ball. They continued to do the things that they do that makes their quarterback so special. Uh, but our kids fought. I believe we gave up six points after the touchdown, uh, and we lost 34-0, but we learned a few things from that, and we'll try to take it into the conference season. Yeah, David, uh, your, your season's been off to a strong start. Now as a senior, you're really one of those leaders in the uh, in the room, but I go back to the Pembroke game with you and, and Broncos' second win in school history against the Braves. You put up 116 yards receiving in that mm -hmm. one. If you can flash back to that game and just the strong start to your season, how did it feel to, to really get things going strong? I mean, it was just a blessing to be able to get the opportunity, catch the ball. Uh, I like to think in each and every moment, just be in the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't like to think too far ahead, too far behind. That's that's just how I play. And just I just appreciate the opportunities I get. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is uh, the year where, you know, you've really emerged as at least coming into the season, you know, as the, the top option for the Bronco quarterbacks with the departure of uh, Barry Elliott, one of the, the stars in the receiving room the last yeah. couple of years. And that, that leaves that uh, that door wide open for, for a new star. Um, how have you kind of embraced that role this year with the departure of Barry and, and new guys needing to step up? And, uh, I, you know, I don't think too big about it. I just I appreciate them boys. You know, when they was here, I took all the advice they gave me and everything. I just I appreciate all the tips they gave me and uh, fulfilling a, a leadership role. I, I like to lead the younger boys on. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell them boys just be appreciate every moment and just be in the moment and play. And whenever you get get your opportunity, you just embrace it. When it comes to the wide receivers, Coach Hayes, what was uh, your message to that group going into the year, that the challenge that they faced? You know, Anthony Green, another guy mm -hmm. who stepped up into a new role, uh, Manny Ortega Garcia, mm -hmm. a part of the trio as well. But uh, what was your challenge to, to those wide receivers coming into the year? Um, just that that was an unproven group. I believe DK came in with the most experience. We had uh, Molly, uh, Harris Strayhorn, and Manny. Mm -hmm. they, they were on the team and they played a little bit, but he had all the experience. So we just ch wanted to challenge that group. We have a couple of young freshmen that we brought in, and we're challenging them. We're, we're looking at moving those guys up, trying to develop a strong, strong receiving core. Yeah. And, David, you know, your development story is, is one of the ones that really stands out on this Bronco offense. You go back to 2022, was it, when you yes, first sir. walked on the Bronco football field? You, you were a walk onto the team, and, and yes, now sir. you're in a leading role on the offense. You flash back a couple of years. What were some of the, the goals you had just initially when you first made the Bronco football program and, and just trying to get involved? Oh, initially coming in, I had a, a humbling experience through football throughout my life. So I just came in. I just want to work as hard as I can. And I was just appreciative of being on the field at the time. You know, I didn't I didn't know what outcomes was going to happen or anything. I just I just wanted to work as hard as I can. And whatever God blessed me with, I, I mm -hmm. You know, I trust his journey. So that yeah, was my... yeah. Kahari Lane was uh, quarterback in the room at, at mm -hmm. the time. You also had uh, uh, a 
couple of the guys who are currently still here right now, a part of that quarterback room. But who are a couple of the guys that just embraced you right away in that that first year and helped you? We're bringing up uh, Kahari Lane and yeah. uh, Toshio Spivey. Those are the actual guys that brought me in from Georgia. So you know, they kind of recommended me to the office coordinator at the time, Coach Fagans, and uh, he kind of gave me the opportunity and. Uh, Coach Fagans, you know, appreciate my work ethic. So I just came in. Uh, and those are the main guys that brought me in. And then the team, they always respected my work ethic um, moving forward from that and uh, just naturally kind of slowly became a leader on the team. Um, and that's, that's how it worked out. Yeah, it feels like every team needs to have uh, a utility type of guy. And, and David seems to be mm -hmm. that for the Broncos, where he's not only catching passes, but also a key player on special teams. Mm -hmm. If you're able to, to talk to his uh, skill set for a moment, Coach Hayes, just how much versatility does, has David allowed you know within the offense over the last couple of years? Uh, a whole lot. You know, he, he had a few injuries later in the season his first year, and I believe a little bit last year he had an injury that kind of hindered him a little bit. But he's always been that Swiss Army knife for us. He also is our holder on PAT field goal. Anytime we're trying to do any kind of face or anything, he's in charge of that. So he has a, a big, big responsibility as it relates to our special teams and then overall game, the, the uh, team game in, our, in general. Is that one of the most pressure-packed positions on the football field, the PAT holder? you gotta, you got to be just right for the kicker. I mean, I don't, I don't think too much about it. I just yeah. touch the ball and make sure I get it down in time so uh, my boy John Vargas can get the ball in the, you know, in the field goal. That's about it. Yeah. Yes, sir. The what's, most, the, what's the biggest key? No laces, right? Can't, can't oh, you yeah. You gotta yeah. That's, the, that's the hardest part, trying to get the laces around. Well, right. I think the, the hardest thing is uh, special teams probably catching punts, man. Oh. But I think the biggest thing is just being back there. You just got to relax, not mm -hmm. not make the moment too big. And just, mm -hmm. you know, you've been playing football since six years old, so you just got to catch the ball. So. Yeah. Well, the, the, the NFL game these days is one that's, you know, dominated by the wide receiver. It seems like that's the position that's being paid the most in pro football now. Who are a couple of the guys that <laughs> you enjoy watching on NFL Sunday, either in the past or, or currently? So in the past, man, my, my favorite receiver all the time is Steve Smith. Um, I always like looking up to him. He's like one of the sm smaller dudes. I wouldn't say he's the fastest, mm -hmm. strongest, biggest on the field. He always just was a dog on the field, mm -hmm. and that's that's the most that's the person I can relate to the most on the field. And that's why I kind of try to attack every game with that mentality. Yeah, Carolina Panthers could uh, they could use some receiver help these days. <laughs> they need another Steve Smith in the building with the way things are going right yes, now. Uh, anyways, back to Bronco football. The Vikings uh, await FSU this week on the road, mm -hmm. Rocky Mount. North Carolina neutral site game as the uh, two sides come together for the first time since 2021. That was pretty mm -hmm. shocking to me, uh, Coach mm -hmm. Hayes, when I was looking over the the head to head. These, these two sides, despite being conference opponents, haven't seen each other in basically three calendar years. Mm -hmm. How does that make the preparation process a little different for you going into this one when when you haven't seen a group for a couple of seasons? Well, it's a little different in that you know Coach Hilliard is the coach now. Before it was Coach Jones, mm -hmm. uh, so Coach Hilliard and his staff, I think I believe they're in their third season. Uh, they're trying to build their program the way he wants it to be to in his liking. And uh, we know he's hungry, they're eager. This is a big game for them. For them. This is one of their bigger crowd games. And uh, mm -hmm. we know what to expect. It's going to be a festive atmosphere, a whole lot of cookout smells, and, and a whole lot of uh, Frankie Beverly music playing. So we're going to have to block all that out and focus in on Elizabeth City. You know, they're 2-1. They're on two-game win streak right now, and they're flying high. So we're going to have to focus on ourselves and, and kind of get – what happened to us last week off our back, so we'll be prepared. Yeah. Flash question. Favorite cookout food? <laughs> uh, tailgate, tailgate food. Now got me hungry. What, what's the pick? I'm going to stay away from the shrimp and grits. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Cookout food, man. Let's go. I mean, you got to go with the fried chicken. I sure. mean, I can't. I, that's the, I'm just going to go to fried chicken. Absolutely. <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, you know, high scoring in this game in the past. The Broncos uh, took down. The Vikings 47 to six back in the 2021 meeting, so put a damper on uh, their their crowd. Uh, you know, if, if it profiles again this year, like the last few, maybe a high scoring uh, game again. But uh, what will be the keys for the offense, uh, David? Just going into uh, this one, what do you guys want to try and establish just in the first couple of quarters? Uh, the biggest thing is just executing each and every play, man. Like it takes 11 dudes to do the one on one 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 eleven jobs and that's that's all it takes, man. The biggest thing. We have the players on the team, we have all the talent we need on the team to be successful and just executing. What would you say that your chemistry is at this point with, with the quarterbacks that you have in the building? So Damari Daniels, uh, we talked about Kahari Lane. 
obviously he's no longer here, but Damari, Caden's been around about as long as you have as well. Y your relationship with them at this point in your career is where? Well, Damari came in as a freshman when I first got here, if I, when I first walked on. So I have a pretty well relationship with Damari, man. You know, we always talk about each other, talk about different routes uh, and our depths and, you know, but where the ball should be at certain times. Uh, we, we always had that communication, so we have a good relationship as well. Yeah, and, and as a party note, Coach Hayes, I'll kind of uh, let you touch on maybe a couple of keys to the game going into uh, this Viking Classic. What do you guys want to improve on from the Valdosta State game mm -hmm. carry into this one? Uh, number one, we want to be able to sustain drives. We felt like we were able to move the ball on Valdosta State, uh, but once we got down to the 30-yard line, we had a couple of hiccups. Uh, we went put on fourth down, they batted down the ball. Uh, so we want to be able to, to sustain drives and get in the end zone. Uh, defensively, we want to be able to get off the field on third down. Valdosta State stayed on the field. Uh, I believe they had the ball 12 minutes in the fourth quarter, uh, and we only gave up a field goal. So I'm really pleased with that part of it, but we don't want to be on the field for 12 minutes on defense. So we have to get off the field on third down, take care of the ball on, on offense, and execute, and I think we'll be fine. All right. Well, looking forward to seeing the Broncos finally get into conference play after a 1-1 one one start in the pre-conference slate. 2 o'clock kickoff up in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, neutral site game. It's the Broncos and the Vikings for the first time uh, since the start of the 2021 season. So coming together for the first time in nearly uh, three calendar years. And the FSU Broncos Sports Network will have the coverage for you in that one. It'll be streaming through FSUBroncos.com. Uh, the, the traveling broadcast with you for that one. That'll do it for this edition of the Pigskin Press Talk as the Broncos get ready for week three. Andrew Chapman thanking you for tuning in. David Barrows, head coach Richard Hayes alongside as well. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for your time. Appreciate you. Talk to you next time. See you later from the Broncos Sports Network. <laughs>